be over two launches a day, 17,000 satellites. Since the rocket was invented, that would be over two launches a day. Do you believe it? How many launches do they have at Cape Canaveral? About one every three or four months? It's a joke, people. Now listen to this. 42 years ago was the last time that we had a full sunlit picture of the Earth. 42 years ago, by the Apollo 17 astronauts on the face of the moon. And they got the Earth just at the exact time, full, one half of the Earth, lit by the sun, behind the astronauts on the moon. That's the last time we have a full, live picture of the Earth. We've had many other pictures, but what they are is there's a strip here and a snippet there, and they're all stitched together, even though they're taken at different times to make a composite of what the Earth simulated looks like. What this satellite, Discover, will do as its camera looks straight back at Earth, taking about 13 photographs in a 24-hour period since the satellite is between Earth and Sun looking back with the telephoto lens, it will always see the sunlit side of the whole side of the Earth as it rotates about its axis every 24 hours and as it rotates about the sun every 365 days. That will give us a new perspective of the overview effect of what this home is that we call planet Earth and what it looks like on a daily basis every two hours. So, okay, so set, the satellites aren't real, and, and they know this. They get this money, and they build things that they usually don't tell you about, but when they do tell you about them, they give you completely false ideas about what these things are really used for. Communications, banks, stock exchanges, hotel reservations, cable TV, hospitals, computer centers, and other new customers are appearing at an increasing rate. We are in the midst of a global communications explosion. Helping meet this demand are communications satellites. This is President Eisenhower speaking. It is a great personal satisfaction to participate in this first experiment in communication involving the use of the satellite balloon known as ECHO. In this first experiment in communication involving the use of the satellite balloon known as ECHO involving the use of the satellite balloon known as ECHO. This is August 12, 1960. President Eisenhower took part in the historic first transmission via ECHO satellite. By bouncing radio waves off its shiny surface, it made possible long-distance telephone conversations, long-distance telephone conversations, bouncing radio waves off its shiny surface. It made possible long-distance telephone conversation by bouncing radio waves off its shiny surface. It made possible long-distance telephone conversations involving the use of the satellite balloon known as ECHO. Long-distance telephone conversations, long-distance telephone conversations, 
and the transmission of photographs and music. Other communication satellites followed. Telstar. The Discoverer 17 satellite is launched into north-south orbit from Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. After more than a million miles and 31 passes over the Earth's poles, a capsule is released over the Pacific, where a flying boxcar waits to grapple the descent chute. A miss on the first try, but the second makes the connection. This recovery completes the most successful test in the Discoverer program. It is the first in which the rocket engine of a satellite was restarted in orbit in itself a major stride forward in space technology. The recovered capsule carried biological specimens, including artificially grown human cells, which will give vital knowledge of environment for putting a man into space. A major milestone in America's program of space exploration. Relay. Syncom. Each a research step leading to commercial spacecraft capable of handling satellite communications. In 1964, television viewers around the world were able to watch the Olympics from Tokyo. At the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, doctors discussed space medicine and early cancer detection. One of these things go down, what do you call it? Weather balloon. Now this UFO came oh, down boy. in my backyard. It was a weather balloon. Yeah, weather balloon. These are all weather balloons, aren't they? Technically, that's not a lie. They're designed for handling weather. Right? Rocket design failure blamed for Galileo satellite mislaunch. An investigation by launch service provider Arian Space shows that fuel freeze caused the Galileo satellite launched in late August to enter into a lower orbit than planned. A Soyuz rocket carrying two Galileo satellites was launched from French Guiana at 9.27 a.m. on August 22nd. The fairing, a cone which protects the payload, was shed after the rocket entered into space due to the reduced friction as, in friction as anticipated. The first and second stages also detached from the rocket without a hitch. A design flaw, however, caused the fuel powering the frigate stage to freeze. The hydrazine nozzle was blocked as the fuel supply pipe was placed too close to low temperature helium pipes. The satellite was placed into a lower orbit than planned. Lacking sufficient fuel, the satellites are not expected to make it into their pre-planned orbit. This is in case I'm going to So now I'll hear UAP, you're so dumb, man. Don't you realize these things, they re enter the atmosphere and they burn up and you can totally see it. Okay, well, you see something. What is it? Maybe this incendiaries from a plane. 